the faceless live in Evan Holly. Level 2 slash 4430. Classified. Item number SCP 4430. Object class Pending. Special Containment Procedures Houses of individuals who are in the process of raising a child within the target age range, three to seven years, of SCP-4430 are to be routinely checked for instances of SCP-4430 and, if found, seized. Amnestic treatment of children within these households to remove any potential mimetic contamination is in effect, though the efficacy and necessity of this treatment is uncertain. Description SCP-4430 is the designation for copies of the short story The Faceless Live in Evan Holly by Clyde Hiller. While the cover of the book has been known to vary between editions, the title and author have remained consistent and are used as the sole method of identification. The majority of information regarding SCP-4430 has been recovered from online sources. See Addendum 4430.2 for further details. Copies of SCP-4430 generally present as a paperback book targeted at young children, containing various illustrations to punctuate the narrative. While the books themselves state that the original copies were published in 1968, there is no other documentation that supports this. A Rice search for the title returns no results other than incident reports of missing persons. Initially thought to be a mimetic effect, SCP-4430 appears to have the anomalous trait of causing a small fraction of suggestible individuals to go missing. The mechanism through which this occurs, how victims are selected, and where those victims are relocated to, are all unknown. Thorough mimetic screening tests of SCP-4430 and its readers have all returned negative. SCP-4430's anomalous characteristics do not manifest under laboratory conditions. Parents rarely deny purchasing SCP-4430, but also state that they have no explicit memories of doing so. The majority of SCP-4430 instances remain unread by the child and are only found after their adolescence. Of those who discover the instance, very few go missing. To date, only five children have been identified to go missing in ways that could not be explained by other causes. See Addendum 4430.1 for further details. Addendum 4430.1 Suspected Victims Person Eines Diana Date reported 2015, January 16th Person Chatty Sophie Date reported, 2006, July 5th. Notes. Youngest twin. Parents recently purchased many books, including SCP-4430. Person. Chatty. Katie. Date reported, 2006, July 5th. Notes. Eldest twin. Parents recently purchased many books, including SCP-4430. Person, McGuire, Danny. Date reported, 1975, December 12th. Person, unidentified male. Date reported, 1971, March 18th. Notes, anonymously reported from passerby, clutching a book identified as SCP-4430. Mild facial nevus flammaeus. Footnote. Permanent genetic malformation of capillaries at the skin, causing a deep red, rash-like appearance. Addendum 4430.2 Parawatch Forum Post Fires March 29th, 2015 Saturday, 3 1919 Number 8737463 Many people know Watership Down and the Plague Dogs as children's books that stick with you. Despite their saccharine appearance, the novels contain mature themes and content. Missing from this trinity is the often overlooked and overshadowed The Faceless Live in Evan Holly. 
Known for its interesting portrayal of social influence and peer pressure, the cult classic The Faceless Live in Evan Holly has earned its place in the hearts of many since its publication in 1968. The book never gained much attention outside of close-knit literature communities. As such, The Faceless Live in Evan Holly can be found solely in charity stores and yard sales, buried between unwanted vinyl records and droves of musty, unread romance novels. Interestingly, despite poor sales figures, The Faceless Live in Evan Holly has had multiple editions published, each complete with new cover artwork. Avid fans of the book have tried to collect all of the published editions. Notably, the fourth and sixth editions are particularly elusive. First edition, 1968. Standard issue hardback, with only the title and author printed. Second edition, 1971. A small, porcelain mask splattered with red paint is printed below the title. Third edition, 1975. Two small porcelain masks are being raised by a figure from below the frame. The red paint mask is on the right. Fourth edition. Undocumented. Fifth edition, 2006. Below a pond, four porcelain masks are submerged. The two leftmost masks are identical, and the remaining masks are similar to those seen in previous editions. A hand is reaching down towards the red paint mask. Sixth edition, 2015. Unconfirmed. No physical copy submitted. The Faceless Live in Evan Holly is set in 1960s America and follows the actions of Leon, a child of undetermined age and race, who runs away from home after his parents berate him for a large birthmark that streaks across his face like a glass of rich red wine. He runs into a forest near his home, despite his parents' warnings, and makes an attempt to survive on his own. Leon creates a reasonable shelter, forages for blackberries, and finds fresh water. However, Despite Leon's best attempts, he cannot figure out how to make a fire to keep him warm. As dusk is fast approaching, Leon becomes colder and colder still. Reluctant to return home without fixing himself, Leon watches his reflection in a pool of water and readies a pointed rock. Before Leon begins to hurt himself, a masked feminine figure joins him by the riverbed. She does not give her name and insists that Leon call her Masquerade. Leon is initially apprehensive towards Masquerade, but this does not seem to deter her. Masquerade asks Leon if he thinks his parents were right to berate his appearance. Leon, angered by her insensitivity, shouts that he agrees with their criticisms. He sees himself as freakish and cursed, so he should accept his place. Interested by his acceptance of his situation, Masquerade then asks why Leon hates his face. Leon looks at Masquerade, exasperated and simply states that he hates his face because it causes everyone else to hate him. As dusk descends on the forest, Masquerade reasons that the only reason Leon hates his face is because everyone around him judges him to be a freak because of it. Masquerade points out that he should not hate his face then, but instead hate everyone that cast him out. Masquerade states that Leon would be happier without a face, since without a face, there is nothing for anyone to cast hate upon. She asks if he would be willing to give his face to her, so he could live in Evan Holly. He accepts, and Masquerade pinches Leon's chin and pulls upward, removing his face like a porcelain mask. Leon states that he feels a sense of relief, like a weight being removed from his shoulders, or a deep sigh from within his soul. The final images of Masquerade in a clearing, alone, throwing a porcelain mask into a well.